Hello and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how in just seven weeks you can grow as much spinach as you can possibly eat. It's very easy to grow spinach in a very short amount of time. We're going to kick this off by filling up a seed cell tray with a 50-50 ratio of compost and topsoil. If you haven't got this mixture to hand you can make it yourself or if you've only got compost, that'll do for now too. Spread it out over the tray and gently push it in with your fingers. I use a 50-50 ratio of compost and topsoil. The compost holds on to nutrients while the topsoil holds on to moisture. I find it's a good mix to use in pots, trays and hanging baskets. So fill up the tray and gently press your fingers into each cell, like I'm showing you here. And if there are any air holes, just top it up with a little bit more of the mixture. What we want is a lack of air holes at the bottom of each cell. That will affect the roots. But you don't want to press the soil down too firmly because then it will stop or hinder the roots growing to the bottom. Right, then we're going to want to soak this. Um, there's two ways of doing it. Either, like here, you can put it in a tray and fill with water. That will then take about 15 minutes to saturate. Or, like probably most of us will, just give the tray a water a couple of times just to make sure that the mixture has as much water as it can hold on to. Okay, this is the spinach I'm growing this year. Monopa? Monopa? Monopa. Monopa. Something like that. The seeds are quite large, which makes handling them a lot easier than normal. Get yourself a couple of labels. You notice I've got the number 19 on the label here. That's the week of the year it is when I'm sowing the seeds. I find it's easier to work out how long things have been in the ground for if I use an, uh, a number rather than comparing two dates. Right, so grab your seeds from the packet. And as you can see, the seeds are larger than lettuce or smaller seeds like that. They kind of look like that. So I'm going to sow two to three seeds per cell so that we get a good germination rate. What a good guess. Okay, fold that over and they'll keep for a year or two and pop them somewhere dark and dry. Pop your labels in so you remember what's where. And then we're going to want to just cover this with a little bit more soil just to cover the seeds. As you press your fingers down you'll feel the moisture coming through from the mixture below. If it does, that's a good sign. It means it's fully saturated. If it doesn't, it means it might need a little extra water. This will really give them a kickstart and it will mean that you'll need to water them a little less over the next few days. We really don't want these drying out. And then put this somewhere warm. I'm going to put it in my grow house. They don't have to go very high as they don't need sunlight yet, um, but a hot room, a windowsill would work just as well. Just zip that up. So that all happened in week one. Coming back in week two, we can see that the spinach seeds have started to germinate. We have one, and there's a little, little one poking out there. They can take 10 to 14 days to germinate. Checking in week three, we can see a very good germination right now. However, they are starting to lean to one side. This is because they're looking for the sunlight. To combat this, just turn the tray every few days and they'll grow straight. It's week four and they're already ready to be transplanted. They're nice and healthy. In this case, I only actually have one, possibly two seedlings per cell, so I'm not going to thin them down. I'm going to transplant them here. I've got this long window box. Half of it's going to be spinach and the other half is going to be lettuce. So I'm going to fill that up with the same mixture that I used in the cell tray. It's again a 50-50 ratio. 
Now that we have good germination and the seedlings are starting to grow, they're now going to benefit from that added nutrients. So I'm just going to press that down in there just to get rid of any air holes again. I'm going to want plenty of soil in here so it holds onto as much water as possible. This is this is the, the sunny side of the house and it gets very hot. So we want we want to make sure this is well watered. Like so. Right, using the flat end of a pencil, poke out the cell from the tray and you'll notice that there's a very nice root structure starting to develop at the bottom. They're just starting to poke through. This is a good time to transplant. You could also leave them a few days. Don't leave them too long or the roots will start to wind around and loop around, which is um, bad for transplanting. You also don't have to take all of your seedlings, just take the strongest ones, the ones with the most leaves, the ones with the thickest stem. There we go. I think I'm taking about 10 here out of the 16 or 20 that I had growing. Now using a dibber or a tool handle, make a hole which is the same depth and width as the cell that you're about to drop in. It will make transplanting easier and it means that we won't disturb the roots, which is what we're after. If the soil you're using is very light, it may not hold together very well, so you can give it another water which makes transplanting easier. Just drop the cell into the hole and push it down gently at the sides with your fingers, just to push it down into the hole. Like so. Transplanted seedlings need more water than established plants, so make sure you water this every few days just while they're growing new roots. Ooh, wobbly camera. Oh, there we go. Don't worry if they're limp or falling over, they will pick up over the next few days. So check in at the beginning of week five, they've established very well and they've adjusted well to being transplanted. Those leaves are starting to grow already. Check in week six, they're still doubling in size and we can see they've almost filled the space between the plants. The spacing was around two to three inches um, and they will fill that relatively quickly. And week seven, we can see this, the leaves are already ready to be harvested. We can take as many leaves as we want and cutting leaves will encourage the plant to continue to grow. If you have any damaged leaves, cut those off too and they will be replaced by healthy ones. Harvesting is straightforward. Grab yourself a, a small sharp pair of scissors. Pick the biggest leaves from the plants and just cut them at the base. You can rip them or twist them off, but I find just cutting is a whole lot easier. And there you go, these plants will continue to give you fresh leaves for the next few weeks. And as they only took seven weeks to grow, get some more seeds in the tray now and you'll have plenty of plants into the future. And there you go, I hope you enjoyed this video, it was a lot of fun to make. If you have any questions or advice for others, please put them down in the comments so we can all learn and grow together. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and consider subscribing, it really helps me out. And here's some other videos I've done which you may enjoy. Happy growing!